Some time ago, we built two clamp racks for the shop. One was an adjustable rack that evolves with your collection because you can adjust the spacing between the hangers for different types of clamps. We have plans for that rack on our website, which I'll link to below. It's a great option for a small shop with a slowly growing and changing clamp collection. But what if you have a larger shop and a bunch of clamps already? And what if the majority of those clamps are big and heavy and together they weigh enough to tear down the entire building if you try to hang them on a wall? I exaggerate a little bit, but the fact remains that we do have a lot of big parallel clamps around here because they're my favorite type of clamp. I'll link to the ones I use below if you need some good ones. I need a really big, really strong rack for this robust collection. And we built such a rack about a year ago. It's not difficult to build. In fact, I'll show you how we did it at that time, and then we'll talk about how we recently upgraded it a little bit to fit even more heavy clamps. It started with boring a row of holes down the center of a couple 2x6s. The holes were an inch and 3 eighths in diameter and spaced about 10 inches apart. A template made the layout easier and more accurate than marking them with a measuring tape. The shavings from a good Forstner bit made the boring work more fun and it filled the air with a nice piney smell. The router table served as a support for the seven and a half foot long boards. The width of the rack was determined by the wall space available. In this case, we had 54 inches to work with, which sounds like a lot, but as you'll see, it filled up fast. Originally, we planned to put a third leg in the center of the rack, but someone made a mistake and the holes didn't line up, so that leg was scrapped. Well, half of it was. We managed to recycle part of it to serve as a top stretcher. And an old 2x4 that had been just hanging around the shop like a layabout was put to work as a bottom stretcher. Now we have a big frame, and I'm standing back watching to see if the stash can fit it in place on his own, because I like enabling the elderly almost as much as I like sitting on my backside while others do heavy lifting. He managed just fine. After chugging a couple cans of Ensure, Mustache Mike got out the metal chop saw and started chopping metal. This was our second mistake, though we didn't know it yet. You'll see what I mean later. What wasn't a mistake was using a chop saw to cut the steel conduit. I used to have to do stuff like this with a hacksaw by hand. This little saw has changed everything for me. It cuts through steel, even big stuff like butter, and all the cuts come out clean and square. I'll put a link to it below if you want to check it out. Eight pieces of three quarter inch conduit later, the rack was ready to tip back in place. And this time I helped because that's the sort of guy I am. It was secured to the wall with some screws into the studs. That's when I said maybe we should secure these pipes better because it would be a disaster if one shifted and fell out of the hole on one end and buried someone in heavy clamps. Once finished, it didn't take long to load the rack up with clamps of all sizes. But that's where I saw the problem. The three quarter inch conduit was bending under the weight of the heaviest clamps. Remember that third leg that was scrapped? It would have been really handy about now. That was mistake number one. Mistake number two was for me to cheap out and use conduit instead of proper steel pipe, which would have supported a lot more weight. So here we are a year later, swapping out some of that conduit for heavy steel pipe, which I salvaged from some old pipe clamps that I don't use anymore because parallel clamps are way better. And it just so happens that I recently got some more parallel clamps, which is why I decided to pull the trigger on this rack upgrade. I don't know what this rack weighs fully loaded, but I suspect it's at least 11 million pounds. That's 5 million kilos to our European viewers and any cocaine smugglers that may be watching. It's a simple, hard-working rack that can be cheap if you have a source of used pipe. Of course, the cheaper conduit will work just fine as long as you don't mess up that third leg. See you next time. If you get what you pay for, then why are bandsaw blades so inexpensive at sawblade.com? Seriously, they're as good as any I've used, they come in any size you need, and they cost quite a bit less than anything comparable at the woodworking retailers. Try them for yourself at the link below this video. You'll see. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up, or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.